All right, next topic is team most likely to pull a UConn. And by that, I mean a three seed, four seed, or a five seed that might be might have underperformed during January. Maybe they underperform in February that can get to a final four, maybe even a national championship. I, I get that UConn went through a, his, dare I say, historically dominant national championship run, winning every game by double digits. Um, so I didn't want to put that sort of pressure on these teams. But of the teams projected for threes, fours, and fives, which ones can you sort of visualize, let's say, a final four run with some dominant performances sprinkled in? Oh, I mm. love this question. It's fun. I think there's... Would you like, a, me, to, yeah, would you you like me to read you the teams? Yeah, please, please. All right, so this is per bracket matrix. Three seeds are Wisconsin, Alabama, Baylor, Iowa State. Four seeds are Illinois, Duke, Dayton, Creighton. Five seeds are Auburn, BYU, San Diego State, and South Carolina. Are we allowed to go b- lower than this, a seed line, or no? Yeah, if you want to pick a six seed, I'm not going to stop you. Can you give me the six seeds? All right, let me pull it up. Some I'm great one, options in those first couple of ones. There's one team that I think is the real answer here, but I'm waiting. Six seeds are – six seeds, I mean, this is, sort of feels like an obvious choice. Kentucky. That's the obvious choice. That's what I was yeah. going. So I, Utah, I, Utah State, Florida, Atlantic, Oklahoma are the other sixes. I think the let's let's eliminate Kentucky, but I think the the real answer here is like Kentucky ends up on the five line and finishes fifth in the SEC, and we're all like, ah, oh, yeah, w- whatever. They they don't have a defense, and then they just play lights out, and Dillingham yeah. and Shepard are crazy. But that one's too obvious, so let's eliminate them and pick from the actual twelve that Riley gave us three through five. Cart, you want to go first? I think the one that stuck out to me immediately was Iowa State. I really like this Iowa State team. Um, Lipsy as like his growth and as being like the just like the non shooting, like non offensive, like get into the paint point, like literally stand in on the block while he has the ball and to become the point guard that he's become. I mean, Greg, we talked about the other day, you know, people thought the sky was falling in Iowa State when Tyrese Hunter left and they ended up getting they ended up getting the great end of that deal and the upgrade in that deal. And they're a better team and they are better without Tyrese Hunter. And you know, the freshman whose name I'm not going to butcher is a sniper and is six nine. Like they just they got a lot on this team. Oz is a really good coach. I every time I watch this Iowa State team, I just I you know I just love watching them play. I think they're a really good team. Um, that's kind of cheating because you had them as a three seed, right, Riley? So it's like if if they made yeah, a run, seed. I wouldn't really I guess balk at that. So my backup choice, obviously, I'm gonna have to go with Illinois. I still think that Illinois is a team with that has a run in them as long as, you know, they're at full strength. Greg? Uh, I was wondering if Cart was going to name drop this team at all at a certain point, and he didn't, and I give him credit for not doing it. I'm a worse man than him. Um, I, I'm i really it, – it's like heroin. I've never used heroin, well, but I – Greg, imagine, you better not. I imagine that what I'm about to do is like the needle. That's what I imagine it feels like. I saw it last night. They were playing. They were in overtime last night. I'm going Creighton. Nah. I'm going Creighton. Greg. I'm going good. Creighton. Hear me no. out. Here's no. why. No, no, no. Can I, can I try? Can I try? Let me try. They can't stop anybody. Yeah, let me try. This is super, 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 duper, super, duper, duper notable. Yeah, a bunch of dupers. Do you know what Steven Ashworth has done in his last three games offensively? What? Five for nine from three against DePaul, 17 points. Four for eight from three against Butler, 26 points. Six for seven from three against Providence on the road, 20 points, including some huge shots to send that game to overtime after they were down seven late in the second half. I was super out on Creighton the entire beginning of the season, single-handedly, not because of their defense or anything else with them, but single-handedly because Steven Ashworth stunk. He wasn't good enough to play at this level. I thought it was just a total miss, a Nick Timberlake-level miss. He looked uncomfortable. He can't do anything. He's coming off three games in a row where he's absolutely unconscious. He looks like the guy that we saw at Utah State. He's coming off screens. He's doing a little bit off the dribble. Suddenly, the plays are just happening in real time for him. The formula with Creighton was never going to be unbelievable defense. I thought they could have a good defense because anytime you have Kalk, like you, your defense should be fine. I still think their defense is fine. They're top 40. They're not great. Maybe that ends up top 20 with a tournament run. The serious issue was always that Ashworth stunk. And I don't think Ashworth stinks anymore. 
And they're going to end this season with 10 losses because they still have to play UConn. They still have to play Marquette. They have a couple tough road games. They have seven losses already. Everyone's going to assume that's slept walk through the regular season. When in reality, if this is just Ashworth going forward, if he's going to make 50% of his threes and get you 15 points a night, this is the team we were promised in the offseason card. Could happen. Hey, they're, he's just so bad defensively, though. And I can't. I, I, was it Carter it's, who it's, said he? Sorry, it's it's more Ashworth defensively. Like I'm glad he's doing the offensive thing, but he is so small out there. And also, I'm I'm not starting the dialogue yet, but we're gonna have a all. This guy actually might just be tall team, like inspired by Zach Eady. No, I watched no. Jo- no, I watched Josh Aduro for 40 minutes treat Ryan Kalkbrenner like he was Stephen Ashworth. It's a bad take. It's a bad take. It's a really bad take. I love Kalk, but did he not to get dominated for 40 minutes last night? It's a really bad take. But I love Kalk, though. But did he not get dominated for 40 minutes last night? Oduro played well. And every single bucket was just right at Kalk's chest. Oduro played well. Yeah, Oduro's good. 12, 5, 7 assists and 3 blocks from Kalk. Yeah, Kalk's good. I mean, you're you're implying he's not. You just imply he's just big. <laughs> yeah, that was taking it too far. That was definitely taking it too far. But I, it, you know, after watching what Oduro did to him last night, I just I left I left that game saying that Kalk Renner might be soft. I do want to say well, this? Yeah. Two, sorry, Riley. Two of Kalk's uh, Ken Palm comparisons. Two of them this season are different John Teske years. <laughs> That's a little scary, Riley. What were you gonna say? I was just going to say, like, yes, Oduro's good, but if you're supposed to be one of the, what, at worst, five best defenders in the country for Kalkbrenner, you kind of need to show it pretty consistently. And I don't know if Oduro is that good that he should be stunting on a top five defender if he truly is top five. I'm going to say no comment. Say no comment. (laughs) I'm going to look something up. Riley, what's your answer to this prompt? All right, I'm glad Carter picked Iowa State. I love that pick. I was sort of afraid I was going to pick Iowa State and get clowned because of the the stereotypes that they can't score. But yeah, Milan Momsilovic, I'll give you that pronunciation, Cart. That kid's a stud. Lipsy has become one of the best guards in the country. That probably would have been my first pick. Looking at these other teams, I'm tempted to pick Auburn, but it seems like truly the last three seasons they haven't been able to win outside of Auburn Arena. Don't like that for a tournament setting. So I kind of want to go out on a limb here and pick the team that has the best player of this group and go with Dayton and Deron Holmes. Hmm. I like that pick. I think Deron, I don't know if people realize how skilled Holmes is because he's a freak athlete and he's a, a force around the basket, but he also has legitimate perimeter skills. And it's not just him. Dayton has a good guard in Kobe Elvis and this man, Enoch Cheeks. I love that his last name is Cheeks. Uh, As has been said before, I've described many things as Cheeks or Buns when they're not playing well. It's nice to see this in a positive connotation for Enoch. That man is super bouncy. Like Dayton has legitimate athleticism. The offense is top 15 in the country. I don't like that they got packed up by Richmond and scored like less than 60 against them. But as a whole, I think there's a little bit of a world where we see Dayton get the run where they they get the run they should have gotten in 2020. I'm staking my claim now that Dayton will lose their first game in the tournament. Me too. Yeah, I think they're super yeah, limited I, out at the run. I think a lot of people are going to pick them to win a game or two or make a run. I, I don't think I've ever felt more confident that they're going to lose their first game. And I, Duran is stupid. He's one yes. of the – one of the five or six best players in the country for sure. But I, I think they're pretty one dimensional, honestly, no disrespect to Mr. Cheeks. Um, I, if you get packed up by Richmond though, that's usually my disqualification of, can you win a national title? And that (laughs) happened like two weeks ago. Uh, Also, I, I just not to like, like this is the Riley show. Riley's allowed to do whatever he wants, but I just want to throw out that. I think you guys totally botched the prompt here. I think the prompt was like, which, three, four, five seed team can sleepwalk through the season and is like actually a great team that's just going to flip the switch. And you guys gave me Iowa State, who has had a great regular season, and Dayton, who has had a great regular season. I think this is much more about like what team just didn't care and will care in March. Okay, well, that's easy. If that's the case, it's Duke. What? Duke? It's Kentucky. Well, we said Kentucky wasn't eligible for this, and I'm looking at Duke's on the four line, just like UConn was. 
they have NBA talent just like UConn did, and I'm secretly scared that they're going to pull a UConn. So, I like Duke better as an answer than both Dayton and Iowa State, for the record. Still like Creighton more than Duke, though. So do I, do I do I have to keep my Creighton stock, too? Like, is that how, is that how this is working? Yeah, I think, like, if you and I co-own something and one of us is back in, that means the other is by default back in. Yeah. Okay, well, that's good. Well, I'm kind of upset that this is how I'm finding out. Usually I like a text, like, I get a text from you, like, hey, just so you know, like, we're back in on Creighton and I don't really have any. I'm like, okay, good to know. So yeah, I got lot. ambushed. I'm sorry. I didn't text you last night because it was in the middle of Michigan winning too. And we were both down in the dumps about that. Um, last note from me on this, you're, uh, ooh, Oduro went crazy against Creighton. That means they can't win a championship. Last year, Bryce Hopkins gave 27 to UConn's front court in the regular season. And Providence beat UConn. Packing up a, a Providence player, packing up, doesn't disqualify you from being national champion. They packed up Adama Sanogo, who's not that who's not a, considered a top five defender in the country. Donovan Klingon played 21 minutes in the game. Maybe they win if Klingon plays 28. Maybe. Is Klingon, is Klingon just tall? <laughs> Let's go to the third topic. 